Moving on here uh, with the crossover Thursday episode. This is where if we wanted to uh, like predict the game, you can go ahead. I don't really like doing score predictions. I think they kind of are just arbitrary numbers more often than not. But I like to predict what I think this game will come down to. And we would be remiss if we didn't talk about uh, the guy who very famous famously is not Garrett Wilson. And that is Justin Jefferson. <laughs> I'm sure Jets fans heard about that. Um, if you saw that quote, that was, uh, when the Vikings were about to play the 49ers and, and the Jets played the 49ers week one, um, somebody asked him about like, Hey, does it help you to watch how they played the Jets to, to, you know, to prepare? And he was like, yeah, of course, but also they played the Jets differently. People play me differently than they play other receivers. And that was the, I'm not Garrett Wilson because Garrett Wilson doesn't get doubled every single time all day long. I, I don't think right. Uh, or, or maybe he doesn't. That's why Alan Lazard is popping off, but what the Jets like to do is man up because they got the dudes to do it because they've got, in my opinion, the best corner in the league. Uh, maybe Pat Sertan. I'll entertain that, but those are the two for me. Um, And will they man that guy up on Justin Jefferson? Yeah, you know, throughout the entire offseason, the Jets have talked about how Sauce Gardner, they were going to use him to shadow the other team's best receiver more frequently. And this is the kind of game you do it for. The Jets, in the past, under Robert Sala, and this goes back to 2021 before they had Sauce Gardner, have not done it a whole lot. Uh, they, you know, it was essentially, you know, so, and even you know, for Sauce Gardner's first two years, he'd go to the left side, DJ Reed would go to the right side. And they and part of it is they have a lot of trust in DJ Reed, who's been an excellent free agent signing from Seattle. They got him a couple of years ago. But this is the kind of game where you do it, and I think for for the Jets, I think this is one of the keys to the game is that they they should have they should make sure Sauce Gardner is following Justin Justin Jefferson wherever he goes in this one because that's gonna be Justin Jefferson's a tough matchup. I think as much as you may trust DJ Reed, this is the kind of game you get Sauce. This is the kind of game you drafted Sauce Gardner for because you need you know you you're gonna need everything at your disposal to slow slow this guy down, especially the way this the way this Vikings off passing game is functioning at this point and how integral he is to it. Hmm. Yeah, and, and DJ Reed also one of the best CB twos in the game. I think. Like, I think that secondary is the thing about the Jets that's scariest is that if those guys can be like clamps on the outside, and you're playing nine on nine or even ten on ten, if if you want DJ Reed to be part of his own thing, like that's so much harder as an offense to move the ball. If you could just take that one bit of entropy out, especially if you can get the um the the you know the best player in the game neutralized with your best player. But here's the thing, nobody's done it. Nobody has done it. I don't remember what the Jets did last time. I'm actually trying to look that up on next-gen stats right now, how the Jets approached it last time. But Sauce was a rookie, so it's probably different. Um, But the last team, well, now the the team that tried it was uh, the Texans. They tried to put Derek Stingley on him, the other corner uh, that went above Sauce. Didn't go great. 34-7. <laughs> went poorly. Uh, and, and they did try to man him up for a little bit. They started zoning off later in the game when things got out of hand. But other than that, you got, got to go back like two years to Marshawn Lattimore. Last time the Vikings were in London, they tried to man him up. And it's Marshawn Lattimore. Like, that's a good corner. Totally smoked. Um, otherwise, everybody's been too high. Everybody's been bracketing, doubling, trying to get horizontal brackets, diagonal brackets, whatever their coverage likes to do. Um, they're picking out, where is 18? We got to get two on him. If the Jets have the courage... Uh, and Sauce has the juice. I think this might be the only team in the league. Like, if the Jets can't do it, nobody can do it. And I, th I think the Jets have to try and do it because, as I mentioned, they've had a lot of issues against the run. And, you know, I think that they're, they're going to have to bring that extra safety down to try and help on Aaron Jones, who I know is off to an outstanding start this season. I mean, I think... Look, Justin Jefferson's the best receiver in the NFL. I'd be lying to you if I said that matchup isn't terrifying for the Jets. But when you have Sauce Gardner... And you have this kind of run defense, and you, know, you look at the way the Vikings are running the football. The Jets have to send extra resources to to, to try and stop the run game. And I don't know. Like, it, I, so I don't you know. Have to I, mean, yeah, I don't you know have how Sauce is going to hold up against Jefferson. Jefferson might be the one receiver who can beat him, but I think based on the way this Jets team has built their strengths and weaknesses, this is what you have to do. I mean, this is why you have Sauce Gardner because you don't have you don't have a great defensive line right now. So you have a great corner. You have to lean on the great corner. Yeah, so just looking at it at next gen stats from the last game, they played sides, which I'm going to guess the Jets like to do a lot where you know, Sauce is just on the defense left, DJ Reed on the defense right, and you say 
come at me, whoever you're going to come at me with. We're not scared of your matchups because we trust both of these guys. So you might not get a lot of Jefferson on sauce if that's the thing you do. You might put him on DJ Reed and say, you know, let's let's take this matchup away unless you want to have him actually shadow, which would be different. But also, again, you know, sauce was a rookie two years ago and he's he's a, a superstar bona fide now. This isn't his first year anymore, so that could be something. But what what do you think this game is going to come down to? What's your X factor here? Um, I think that the Jets need to force turnovers in this game. Uh, you know, this yeah. offense is still very much working things out, and I think that this Minnesota defense is a tough matchup. Now, I think there are some things the Jets can do offensively. I think you need to see more Braylon Allen for the Jets on offense, and you know, um, your listeners, if they're college football fans, may recognize him because Braylon Allen's from Big Ten country, played at Wisconsin. Um, sure. Really, very promising rookie. And Brees Hall, who I think is a phenomenal young back, just in a slump right now. Um, I also think Braylon Allen might be stylistically better for this Viking defense because Brees Hall is kind of like a slasher. He looks for his hole, waits for things to develop. And I think against this Vikings defense, you just need a guy who's going to move forward, you know, be a, more of a north and south runner. Um, that's where Braylon Allen is. But I think this Jets offense is still trying to sort things out. And I think they need to force turnovers. Um, you know, my experience with Sam is obviously different from yours. Uh, we know that Sam. <laughs> This is this is how it goes. So the Vikings, I think they're like tied for third in the league in takeaways and they're second in the league in giveaways. So there's been there have been wild games with a lot of they've won or tied the turnover battle. It's been balanced, but it's always been like two to two, three to four. Like it's it's they are definitely still not protecting the ball as well as you would want them to. But the defense is forcing turnovers as well. So the turnover battle is a pretty good key to this one. Uh, if there's this stat that's very famous in the Vikings world now that the Vikings under Kevin O'Connell are 21 and 0 when they tie or lead the turnover battle. As long as they don't lose the turnover battle, they don't lose the game. But it is Sam Darnold. It's still Sam Darnold. Okay, it's not a totally different. Guy. It's still the guy you know. He's in there. He's a little bit more repressed. Okay, he's a little bit more of a childhood memory, but he's in there. Maybe seeing the green and white will like bring it out of him. <laughs> Yeah, well, the first game was at MetLife against the Giants, so you kind of thought like maybe like bad memories would come, but no, he played great in that game. But we'll see what happens in London. Comes down this this game comes down to. Um, I, I think you know you can always look to special teams. Um, Jets lost their game. Look, I'm not saying the Jets lost this game because of because of special teams, but uh, Greg Zerline did miss a field goal. Zerline's been a little shaky. He made three field goals, but. A bunch of them were like ones he just snuck through. Um, Jets special teams has historically been been a big positive for the team this year. It's been a little bit more up and down. They haven't gotten big results from their return game. Um, so you know, I think I think whenever you're, you're talking about a game that could be tight, special teams could could make a difference. It did make. I, I didn't want to blame it on Zerline Zer because the Jets messed up so much, so much, so many other things last week. But I think you always look to, always look to the special teams battle because that could end up you know swinging the game one way or another. Special teams make special teams. For me, I also want to focus on um, Will McDonald. If that is truly the Jets' like focused pass rusher, and I'm going to guess that if you looked at the pass rushes, you're going to see him on a lot of one-on-ones, trying to get his matchups, right? Moving him around. Yeah, uh, or do they move him around? Do you know? Do, or do they just let him kind of rush off the same side against the same guy all day? Um, you know, they, I think Jets... Jet Jets guys line up all over the place. Um, okay. But, you know, like I mean, Salah you know, likes to move him around a little bit. Yeah, like you know, when he was in San Francisco, like you would just Nick Bosa would just be like right. on a guy. But um, I don't know. Two schools of thought where like sometimes you want him to be able to like play the long game and go up against the same tackle all day and like set him up and, you know, uh, bring up a diversion at the right time and like kind of play the, this long like battle against a guy. And then sometimes you just want to move him around and say, but what if you rush against the guard? But the Vikings have had bookend tackles all year that have been playing phenomenal football, Christian Derrissaw and Brian O'Neill, and they've been up against quite the gauntlet. Nick Bosa, Daniel Hunter, uh, Will Anderson, Rashawn Gary handed him probably his worst game of the of you know in a while at least of the season. Uh, so unless they want to try to get Will Anderson inside or yeah, uh, Will McDonald inside. Um, that's going to be, I think, a difficult matchup and one that makes me feel pretty good about the Vikings here. I think that I see why the Vikings are favorite, but also, I mean, they're 4-0. They're they're white hot and the Jets are coming off this like super ugly loss. So I get why the vibes are the way they are. Um, do you have any, whether it's a score prediction or a vibes prediction, do you have anything to uh, round this thing out with? I think the Jets need to play at a much higher level than they have in the past, the past uh, four weeks. They, they, did, they played very well in the Thursday night game week three against New England, but... This team's two and two. 
this team in many ways is lucky to not be one and three because they did not play well week two against Tennessee. And when you started the season, expectations were very high for this team. Uh, it, all around New York, there was talk, you know, is this team going to contend for a Super Bowl? Week one, they played another, you know, they played the team that almost won the Super Bowl last year. They don't look like they belong in the same field. Week two, they play a Tennessee team that's frankly not very good. And they, it was a very touch and go game. Uh, New England, they, they did look like a very good team. But last, last week, that was a game most people, Pantaloon doesn't win before, before it started. So I think it was a tough matchup for the Jets. And I think that the Jets need to play at a much higher level because, you know, even though they got that win week two, that was not a, that's if they play that way against if they play the, the way they did in their week two win against Tennessee against Minnesota um, this Sunday they're going to get blown out if they play the way they did against the 49ers week one they're going to get blown out if they play the way they did against Denver week four they're going to get blown out this team has not for the most part looked anything close to a Super Bowl contender and now they're going up against the team uh, the hottest start in the league so what I'd say is that I think the Jets I, the Jets can win I mean some of it might be you know. The, London, the trip to London is always a bit of an X factor. How do teams respond? It's an equalizer, to yeah. You know, um, you know, Sam. There's always the there's going to be the question. You know, can Sam keep it up? You know, does Sam have a have an off game? That could be an equalizer. But I, I just think that if this Jets team doesn't play at a higher level, they're not going to win this game. 